I just received this uh, article uh, entitled from the uh, Jerusalem Post analysis, Europe's Middle East Peace Push. And the uh, subtitle is, uh, Led by France, the Europeans are seeking to uh, a leading role in the peace process, but Benjamin Netanyahu is distrustful of their motives. And the article starts out saying, Ever since last year's resounding American failure to uh, bring about an Israeli-Palestinian accommodation, the Europeans have been looking to step into Washington's shoes and lead a new peacekeeping effort. France has been working on a uh, UN Security Council resolution that would set parameters for a new peace for, for new peace talks. Former Prime, uh, British Prime Minister uh, Tony Blair has been mediating between Israel and Hamas, and the EU Foreign Policy Chief uh, Federica Mogherini is trying to set a broader negotiating framework that would include Arab states. There has been a concerted effort or determination uh, about the Europeans' work with frequent visits to the region, talks with uh, key players, and the uh, talk of highly ambitious peace plans. But the success or failure of their effort is uh, likely to be determined by two non-European protagonists, uh, Israel and the U.S. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has shown little enthusiasm for the various European initiatives. He is distrustful of their motives and does not believe the Europeans can deliver a square deal. Well, at some point in time, that's going to have to change that um, idea because the Bible is clear in Daniel 9.27, or actually starting in verse 25 through 27, that it will be somewhat out of the uh, European Union or the revived Roman Empire that will bring the peace. And, you know, from time to time I get people who email me, email me and say, you know what, you're looking in the wrong place. You should be looking in Turkey or you should be looking here or there or whatever the case may be. But the problem is is that all of these uh, places that they're asking me to look, these individuals, these places are not even anywhere near the peace table. And they've never been considered and simply won't be. But the Bible is clear that the European Union uh, will be the peace brokers and they are sitting at the peace table. And they are front and center, right and smack dab in the middle of the peace process. So I have to go with what the Bible does say. And when these other individuals or these other states, or whatever the case may be, come to the, to the peace table, I might try to consider them. But frankly, some of the scripture that they presented to uh, bolster their, their idea simply doesn't add up either. So don't get angry with me uh, over what I've just said. Just get them to the peace table at some point in time. When they do, let me know. But until that time, I'm going with the European Union and the most common sense biblical angle that uh, is on the table right now. But getting back to the article, it says the question is how far they uh, try to push a reluctant Israeli government. More importantly, if they do exert pressure, how much support will they receive from the Obama uh, White House, frustrated by Netanyahu's backtracking on the two-state solution and live it at his uh, unrelenting interference on the uh, nuclear deal with Iran. In late June, French Foreign uh, Minister Laurent Fabius visited Egypt, uh, uh, Jordan, and the West Bank, and, and Israel as well, in an effort to uh, find a formula to restart the stalled Israeli-Palestinian peace talks. The French hoped to pick up from uh, where the U.S. left off, but avoid the mistakes that led to the collapse of the American effort. Now, simply put, I don't necessarily believe that uh, the French or a Frenchman will be the uh, leaders in this situation. But that's up to the Lord, and once the rapture of the church takes place, the man of sin will come forward, and he will pick the man of sin. You know, a lot of people, they scoff at me when I say that, but the bottom line is, is when Judas betrayed Jesus, it wasn't Satan who picked uh, Judas. It was Jesus who p originally picked Ju Jesus, uh, Judas to be one of the twelve disciples. And it was God who left an opening for Judas to betray Jesus. Don't think for a second that uh, Satan orchestrated that betrayal. It was all in the plan of God. And uh, he jumped right on it as soon as it was available. But it was made available by God himself. And in the end, we know what happened. Jesus was crucified, died for the sins of the world. And thinking, and Satan thinking that he had victory, in fact, was a main player in bringing salvation to the entire world. And that's what's going to happen again when the tribulation period begins. God will select the Antichrist, allow him to rise to fame and power. And at the midway point, when Satan and his uh, demons are defeated in uh, heaven, 
cast out of heaven and then confined to the earth, he will look for this great leader whom God has placed in his power, and he will possess him. But simply don't think for a minute that this is a war between God and Satan, and we're just in the middle of it. You know, many believe that the tribulation period is really focused upon the wrath of God, and it, it does have, that is a focus. But the truth of the matter is, is this is a last chance for man to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, meaning that God will send a four-pronged attack to, to uh, bring in a harvest as big as he possibly can get. All will hear the gospel. You know, as terrible as this time frame will be, this will be a remarkable time in which there will be no doubt that God is the God of this world and Jesus died for the sins of the world. It will be clear. In fact, I just wrote an article, I, I, I may share that with you, that was entitled, Can a Person uh, Take the Mark of the Beast and Then Afterwards Repent and Be Saved? I should have that posted uh, on my website sometime soon, but you might be surprised at the answer that I give. But you can be assured that it will be a biblical answer that is completely saturated in Scripture. But getting back to the article, it says, After meeting with uh, Fabius, both the Arab League and the Palestinian Authority uh, President Mahmoud Abbas uh, welcomed the French uh, initiative. Israel claimed the proposals were half-baked, trying to impose borders without talk, uh, taking its most basic security needs into account. Well, that's usually what the case is. But I do believe that once the uh, agreement is solidified during the tribulation period, that I do firmly believe that Israel will feel that their security needs are met. And the reason why I do is because Ezekiel 38 indicates that they feel that they're living safe within their land and within the borders of their land. And I don't necessarily believe that uh, Iran will have renounced their nuclear ambitions. I think that whoever it is that's in charge will convince Israel that the security that he will provide and that the world will provide is enough to make them feel safe, even with this hanging over their head. And not just them, but the entire uh, Arab uh, League. You know, I've always believed that this agreement would in some way encompass the entire Middle East. Uh, it would be like a, a regional umbrella agreement. I think that, as I said, Syria and Iran will be in one corner, whereas the Israelis and the uh, Arab, modern Arab world will be in the other, uh, on the other end. And I don't have any doubts that at some point in time that a Palestinian state will be created. There will have to be some compromises on both sides. I do not believe that the modern Arab world nor the uh, uh, Palestinians will get all that they want, nor Israel. But I do believe that they will think that it is in the best interest of everyone that they come to terms with this uh, West Bank conundrum and uh, they will do some land swaps. Now whether or not it will get to the point to where Jerusalem will actually be handed over to the Palestinians, I don't see that happening. That may be in the agreement, and I do believe it will be a phased-in agreement, and we're going to get to that in this article in just a second. But in the end, I don't believe that the Lord will allow uh, the, the uh, Arab world to have any part of Jerusalem. But of course, that's speculation on my part, and that very well may happen, but in the end, uh, God will come down and rectify that problem. Now going on, it says, The idea behind the uh, French move for a new Security Council resolution is to set internationally agreed parameters for Israeli-Palestinian peace talks. The aim would be to uh, reassure the Palestinians on what a final peace deal might look like and put international pressure on Israel to participate in serious and focused negotiations. A UN resolution of this kind would bypass the need for consensus between the parties on terms of uh, reference for final peace talks which is precisely where the American mediated peace effort broke down in early 2014. The French have not yet finally decided on whether to go uh, to the Security uh, Council or go, go on the Security Council route. Uh, it will depend on the degree in international support, especially American, they have. So, you know, I, I agree with them. This uh, peace proposal will go nowhere unless the Americans finally put the pressure on Israel to finally get this peace process done. So that's really been the, the holdup right there. But if a resolution is adopted uh, and is voted on and the U.S. does not veto it, that's going to be a real problem for Israel. So that's really where you want to keep your eye on is whether or not the U.S., when this finally c comes down and meets, the rubber meets the road, Will, US, will the U.S. finally say to Israel, you're going to have to make this happen, and we're not going to veto it? And one by one, I believe that you're going to see European country after European country start recognize Palestine as a state, and finally you'll probably see the U.S. do the same thing. 
that has been the pattern in the past as uh, resolutions like this have evolved. But going on, it says, but if they do, the proposed resolution will likely refer to the November 1947 UN General Assembly Partition Plan, which called for the establishment of two states, one Jewish and one Arab, and uh, which was uh, jubilantly hailed by the Israeli state in the making at the time. It will also seek to replace the 1967 UN Security Council Resolution 242, which called for uh, land for peace without uh, going into details as the preeminent uh, international document on peacemaking uh, between Israel and the Palestine Palestinians. And here are some of the details. As the proposed resolution will call for two states, Israel and Palestine, living side by side in peace. Jerusalem as the capital of both borders along the 1967 lines with land swaps and a satisfactory security package for uh, Israel. And I believe they will get a, secure, uh, a uh, satisfactory security package. But there are major difficulties in the way of a draft that could uh, bring both sides to the negotiating table. For example, it, is, or it will refer to Israel as the nation state of the Jewish people. If it does, the Palestinians will probably reject it. And if it doesn't, Israel might say no. And needless to say, the Palestinian refugee question will need to be uh, need an open formula both sides can live with. The French will also have, a, have to decide whether or not a, uh, to include timetables for negotiation and for subsequent implementation. Now we know that it's going to be a seven-year peace accord, so I believe it's going to take seven years to phase this in. Finally, the, the crown jewel will be Jerusalem as their capital. So in the end, whoever brings this peace accord will have a uh, seven-year uh, implementation to it. The aim would be to set a target date for completion of a peace treaty in, say, two years uh, by November uh, 2017, the 50th anniversary of the occupation, and allow three to five years uh, after that for phased implementation. So if you're looking at seven years right there, or I'm sorry, two years from, to, from November uh, 2017, and then another five years, that's seven years right there. So now we are getting on task as to what the Bible does say. Last December, however, the Security Council rejected an Arab resolution setting a two-year timetable for a final peace deal, largely at America's behest. Uh, but, that, but what will the American position be this time around? And, you know, that's the key right there. EU Foreign Policy Chief Mogherini came to uh, Israel just a week, a week after Netanyahu formed his new government in Maine. She said the fact that she had uh, come so uh, early had, had meaning. In late June, or I'm sorry, in late July, after the meeting of European foreign ministers in Brussels, Mogherini announced her intention to set an international support group uh, to uh, give Israeli Palestinian negotiations a better chance. The plan is to add Arab states to the international quartet of the U.S., EU, UN, and Russia. And you know, that opens up a whole new uh, can of worms as well. Is that whole new support group going to turn into a 10 nation kingdom so that might be something else you want to keep a, a, an eye on it says to give israel greater incentive to negotiate and to help uh, and help the palestinians make concessions on sensitive issues like jerusalem and refugees the international support group could also help advance israel hamas negotiations on a long-term ceasefire the european aim is not only to widen the uh negotiating framework, but also to broaden the agenda. If this ambitious plan works out, uh, there would be a triple focus on Israel's relations with the West Bank, with Gaza, and with the Arab world as a whole. And the uh, Jerusalem Post lays out four different uh, objectives, but the one I want to key on is this right here, Air Israel Arab world. Adding a Arab countries, or adding Arab countries to the negotiating framework could create conditions for talks on a full normalization of relations between Israel and the Arab Muslim states based on the Arab Peace Initiative of 2002. This would be predicated on normalization in return for Israeli withdrawal from the West Bank and the establishment of a Palestinian state. And as you know, yesterday or day before, I sent out a report that uh, Mr. Netanyahu was encouraging an Arab world, or should I say, modern Arab world peace accord uh, between Israel and the modern Arab world. So whether he's just talking or whatever the case may be, he's at least saying it out loud that he would l welcome a modern Arab world Israeli peace accord. 
And of course, one of the objectives is, is if it works out, this triple focus wide negotiating framework approach could give Israel a historic opportunity to transform its stand in the region. And to kind of get, summarize what some of the things that were said in this article, uh, from this point on, it says that they don't really believe that Netanyahu has the ability to step up because he pretty much stated in his uh, election, his last election, that a, a Palestinian state was out of the question. In fact, the article says that indeed pa Netanyahu's current Palestinian policy is based on managing the conflict rather than solving it. And I have to agree, that's probably all it will ever be as, as long as he's in office. But at some point in time, there will be a game changer that's going to come, in, come about. That's either going to force him out or is going to force him to change his mind. And this uh, is really probably what will happen. So the overarching question, though, is whether the international community, especially the United States, will allow Netanyahu to maintain his conflict-managing policies. Frankly, I don't believe they will. Hard on the heels of the Prime Minister's rejection of the two-state formula in the uh, March election run-up, U.S. President uh, Barack Obama warned that there would be foreign policy consequences without spelling out what they might be. White House uh, spokesman Josh Earnest was uh, more forthcoming. The understanding that Israel was committed to a two-state solution was uh, a bedrock of U.S. policy, he explained, adding that if Israel walked back uh, that policy, the U.S. would find it more difficult to shield it from attack in international forums. The implication was that if a resolution on Palestinian state, statehood in the context of a two-state solution was presented to the U.N. Security Council, Israel would not be able to count on an automatic American veto as it had done in the past. Ernest pointed out that if the U.S.-Israel Strategic Partnership Act passed uh, by Congress in December of 2014 pursuant to uh, of a two-state solution was identified as our goal to solve this conflict. And if Israel was no longer on board, the U.S., he said, would have to reassess uh, its policy for uh, solving the Israeli-Palestinian Palestinian problem. Come this year's uh, UN General Assembly meeting in September, there could be a reversal of traditional great uh, power roles, with the Europeans in the uh, mediator's seat and the U.S. providing the carrot and the stick. Uh, how long it lasts would depend on how effective it proves. So there's still a lot to be seen uh, in, before October comes rushing in to see how forceful the United States actually will be uh, with Israel. And I'd certainly keep my eyes open to see where, where this actually goes. But at some point in time, the Bible is clear that there will be a peace accord that will be established and confirmed, and it will be, include Israel and many. And as I've said many times, I believe that the rapture of the church will take place before that. And if you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. 150,000 people die every single day. The Bible says that the vast majority of them will end up in a burning hell. Don't let that happen to you. Come to the Lord today. Accept Him as your Savior. Repent of your sins and start living for Him from this day forward. And you Christians, you know that someday that the rapture is going to take place and you're going to leave behind your lost friends and loved ones to go through the most horrible time period this world's ever known known as the Tribulation Period. Well, I have a book uh, known as a Tribulation Period Survival Guide that tells them how to survive this time period. But the most important thing is that it tells them first and foremost that they need to come to the Lord as Savior. I would recommend that you get a copy of this book and put it in their hands. And hopefully they'll come to the Lord before the rapture of the church takes place so that they won't need it on the other side. If I were you, I would either download it or I would make this investment and get this book, hand it to them, and, and, and tell them to keep it in a safe place. They might laugh at you at, at first, but the bottom line is, is one day they won't. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.